Hello, hello everybody. How are we all doing today? I um, just got set up with everything, so everything seems to be running okay this morning, but let me know in the chat uh, if you can see and you can hear me okay. Um, good morning or good afternoon, probably evening for a lot of you guys over, over in the States. So um, thank you so much for coming along. It's great to have you here. Um, so I've just got a, a, my sketchbook open at the moment from the, the last scene. Uh, for those of you who are new here, I'll just do a really quick introduction. My name's uh, Darren and I'm basically an artist and teacher over here in Melbourne, in um, Australia, of course. And basically, I do a bunch of these streams every week. And today we're going to be going through a couple of subjects actually requested um, by one of my friends and patrons, Ellen Whitney. So Ellen's been asking me to do um, some busy sort of street scenes and she suggested um, a couple of scenes with a lot of life and a lot of uh, colors. And um, so basically I have a scene of Vegas and also of Tokyo. And the reference pictures are quite interesting because they are tricky. They're going to be a little different from what we've done in the past. So the first one's going to be a kind of night scene and um, which will require a lot of uh, preserving of the kind of lighter parts, um, the warmer sort of areas of the of the scene. But I'm going to show you uh, some top techniques and um, my, some of my processes to help you to imply depth in your drawings and your paintings especially. So um, I, I recently started making a new class on uh, water, on tone and values in watercolors. And I want to just uh, talk a little bit more about that because I know it's a subject that a lot of beginners wonder about. Um, often when you look at a painting and you wonder how did that artist manage to get that sort of 3D looking feel, just, you know, um, with objects in the front, objects in the back. And a lot of it's to do with actually how light and how dark um, a painting is. So little bits and pieces, you've got full tones, mid tones, and your lightest tones. So for those of you watching, um, let me know uh, whereabouts you're watching from. And also, if you could let me know your top thing, one of the top things you, you're you trying to learn at the moment in your painting, something that you're trying to improve on, um, please let me know in the chats. I would love to hear from you. And um, you also just let me know where you're where you're watching from as well. So if you um, if you do get the chance as well, please share this video, uh, this stream around on um, to, your, to your friends or, or some Facebook groups, that kind of thing, and um, so we can get a few more a few more people. That would help me out a great deal. Um, but I'll go through a quick little tour of some of the scenes that I've um, that I've done. And, and then we'll quickly get started. So there's also some references. If you go and check the discussions, um, there's a little pinned comment in the Facebook chats. You can have a look. Uh, pinned, um, uh, a few pinned, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, references in there. So you can open up those references and take a look. Also on YouTube, uh, I have pasted the, the, um, the reference photo in the chats. Okay, so... Uh, if you yeah, if you're running if you're having any issues, please let me know. I will go through um, I will go through uh, your questions. Um, one of the things I really recommend as well is yeah, if you have any kind of uh, questions um, or you need me to explain something further, certainly just let me know while I'm here on the stream, and um, I'll do my best to to go through a little bit further with you guys. Um, here are some uh, scenes that I've that I've just um, finished painting recently. Some of them are a little bit more simpler than others, um, and so just in case you want to know uh, what my style is like and and some of the the, the paintings that uh, I've done recently. So this one here is uh, is one we did for one of the previous lives. So we're going to actually be doing a couple of line and wash sketches similar to this today, but except uh, for a kind of city landscape couple of city like landscapes so um i also have done this one from a last live which i quite liked as well the, the shadow especially on the right hand side um i do have a, a loose kind of painting style um, i don't usually take all that long when i'm uh, sketching and painting as well so um i tend to just try to enjoy the process 
and um, make sure that I get a an impression of the of the scene. Like um, try to put a bit of my own uh, view and my own sort of interpretation on a scene, rather than hundred percent trying to um, represent represent it like a like a photograph. And I really recommend that for a lot of beginners as well. You know, I think it's you got both ways. You, you know, to develop your technical skills, it's important to try to um, replicate exactly what is there, so that you have an idea of form and uh, tone and stuff like that. But um, if you focus too much on it, I know as a beginner you can get really bogged down and, and stressed out about it. So, what well, I'm going to try to simplify things as much as possible um, for this class and. Um, and go through uh, the basics, okay? Um, so I think that's about it. That's a, about a, a few of the uh, bits and pieces. And you know, funny enough, these are my final two pages in this sketchbook. So, um, so Ellen, these will be the last uh, two, and then we'll be done. I'll have to make another sketchbook afterwards. So um, I'm thinking these should turn out. Let's fingers crossed, turn out pretty good. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Um, I just want to. Uh, acknowledge a few uh, chats that have come through. We've got Kate here. How are you going, Kate from Geelong? Also got Yvette. Uh, Yvette, um, continue for a bit, but good, good to uh, see you on the the stream. And uh, Yvette, Yvette's always uh, pretty prolific. I uh, do see you always having some something new that you've painted almost every week. So well done on that, on the practice and uh, keeping consistent. We've got also Lena Darrell. As well, um, how are you doing, um, Lena? I haven't seen you as well for for a little uh, for a little while. So good, good to catch you again. And um, in Melbourne, fantastic. And Yvette says love the red bus one. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, that was um, that was good fun. That was good fun. It sort of let me focus on. I think I think Yvette's talking about this one. Where is it? The the, the combi van. That one there. Yeah. So th this one allowed me to kind of concentrate a lot more on that subject. I spent more time drawing that than the rest of the stuff. I I just quickly um quickly drew in. But that was really good fun. So uh that was the last one I did for the for the previous uh previous live. So um this one is going to be interesting because it is basically a night scene and the the main thing with this scene you have the reference uh, photo up I think have it up on the on the side of the screen um, so that you are able to to watch um, the video as well as uh, you know refer to the, the to the photograph as well just so that it makes more sense because so the photo the photo in the stream is just a little small in the corner so it'd be, be tricky for you to look at um, but basically the photo you can see there's just a few um, basically light areas you've got the headlamps of the cars we have um, the the uh, lights in the buildings and, and and things like that. So we have to preserve that, and uh, I'll show you how to do that. Um, there's mainly just so many darks in this scene. I'd say about seventy percent um, really kind of dark colors. And I'm going to do my best to try to paint this wet into wet. Afterwards, we'll go through maybe with a, a white pen or a bit of gouache to bring out some of the highlights and things like that uh, too. But um, I'm going to try to keep this one nice and loose and um, see where it takes me. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, I will bring out, what have I got here? I've got a 0.5 pen, I've got a 0.8, a 0.3, um, and I do have a few of these other pens as well, um, which are basically flat, uh, flat edged pens so if you have a look at them this is what they look like they have a kind of um it's kind of like a bullet point marker basically something not a bullet point marker it's a flat a flat edge marker so just create some nice uh kind of edged um, sharp edged strokes kind of like a like window shapes or kind of more geometric squarish rectangular sort of shapes so um these are just a few pens I'm going to use. I don't know if I'm going to use them all, but the main ones you want is probably the 0.5 pen. Um, we also have uh, YC, YC uh, Wang asking, um, hi, how many GSM sheets book is good for watercolor drawing? So in the, what I use is basically 300 GSM or 140 pound for, for those of you guys over in the States. So, I find anything less than that, um, the paper warps too much 
And I find, I, I don't know about you guys, but I do find it sometimes is not sized properly. Sometimes you, you get, um, you, you get uh, a bit of water soaking through the paper. Um, just some weird graininess if you, if you use paper that's too light. So I do recommend about 300 GSM. I've never really used anything um, heavier than that in terms of like a ongoing um, ongoing paper. I have tried 600 GSM before, but I think it's really unnecessary. It's just too thick. So um, 300 is fine. Uh, I This is kind of uh, glued down to the back of this board because it's uh, on a sketchbook, but um, you also can just sticky tape the sides. You can uh, blue tack, put double-edged um, tape on the sides. I don't stretch the paper. I've never stretched paper before, um, and I don't think it's really necessary. So I hope that answered your question, uh, YC, and welcome, welcome to uh, welcome to the the stream. We also have a couple more chats from Lucia. Lucia, how are you doing? Uh, good to see you again. And um, how are you doing this morning, Ramona? And good to see you, Ramona. Um, your second second time. You were here on Wednesday, weren't you? So a uh, new new. Um, uh, I, I think you're new, <laughs> but thank you so much for coming along. And um, also, if you're new to uh, this stream, you're new uh, for the first time here, leave a comment and let me know uh, where you're from. Um, and let me know also just some, some things that you might want me to cover. And I'll try my best during the stream to talk about that. Okay, Just gives me a kind of indication of, of um, yeah, if I draw or I paint something, the context in which I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. So I'm assuming that you've got your bit of paper here and you've got your reference photo up. I've got the 0.5 um, pen. Now this scene, I want you to just uh, break it down. Look at this scene in a really simple sort of way. Okay, we have essentially um, the background uh, and we have this area where the buildings end right in the back. So it's basically the horizon line. Okay, if we look right at the back where that road, the road sort of goes from wide all the way down to a small point um, at the end. That's uh, basically what we'd call the vanishing point where everything becomes so small and just basically disappears okay, in a simple sort of way. Now, you'll notice uh, we want to find where is that vanishing point. Now, it's kind of in the center of the page, but probably a little bit further up. Okay, so if we're going to estimate it, I'd say about here. So just put a little dot. I always uh, recommend using these kind of guidelines, just a little tool. Even I use them because it helps. Okay, and then we're going to say, where does this road um, come in on the side of the paper? So about here at the front of the paper, right here in the corner. So leave a bit of room on the edge and then that road just comes in. And then we're going to have a bit sort of here as well, like that. Okay, so it's, it's kind of uh, disappearing off. Okay, so let's go ahead and we will draw in, just move my palette actually a little bit in the way. We'll go ahead and draw in this, uh, this edge, it's a bit of a road, and it makes it easier if you, of course, create these little um, bits and pieces, these little lines along the way. Okay, um, now it doesn't join up exactly at the back. It's certainly almost like curves around or something at the back. I can't see exactly. Um, but that's about how it works. So we're just going to go down, okay, make sure that's somewhat accurate, like that. Okay, fantastic. So there we have it. We have the most simple part of the scene, which is basically the horizon line, which we can, again, draw a little, uh, very, very light line where, where it uh, sort of disappears off in the distance like that. And truth be told, I've actually... Um, Looks like I've actually drawn this line a little bit too, a uh, little bit too high, but it doesn't matter. I can still put in the building, then it will be fine. Okay, um, but we want to leave enough sky there. That's the thing. You don't want to make that road go all the way up there. It's just going to look a bit funny. This is also a bird's eye view, which is a little different from from drawing a uh, painting something from a uh, from a flat sort of view. You notice as we go up the page here, the cars um, appear higher and higher. So they're not on the same level. Um, say if we're looking at a scene like this, where it is um, eye level, all the cars are pretty much at the same level and the figures and people like that. So this one here, the cars are going further up. Um, 
so it's just a different perspective. It's it's uh, can be you know it can be a little bit tricky, but um, I'm sure we'll get th we'll get through it fine. Okay, so let's put in um, the edge here. No, so this is again another little edge here where the trees and things come in on the side. Um, and who's been to Vegas, by the way? Has anyone been to Vegas? Uh, it's something like I've always wanted to check out at some point in my life. Um, and I was actually meant to go before all this craziness happened, um, just to see what was the deal over there. Um, but I'd love to hear some of your stories or some of you have been over there. Um, I'm not sure if Ellen's here, Ellen, but if you, if you're here, I'd love to hear your stories. I'm sure you, uh, some interesting ones. So, um, but look at that. I mean, there's just lots of lights, lots of neon lights, lots of stuff going on here. Um, certainly, uh, no shortage of uh, things to paint. <laughs> so our challenge here is to reduce this down into a more simple looking scene. Okay, that's that's our challenge. Now, these again are these kind of, um, what do you call them, traffic islands in the center where there's bits of, you know, these trees and stuff growing. There's more here, little trees and things growing here as well. You notice it's very difficult to, to, to discern, but there's again, this kind of, that little island or whatever of trees here and that goes all the way around okay and there we go that sort of comes off like that and uh, of course we're going to have trees running through this section and we can uh, put them in in just a moment what i want you guys to do first though is work on the buildings a general kind of gist of where the buildings are okay but uh, i'm trying to just work on getting in again this there's another road here you can see it it's very um you know, it's not too obvious, but there's a little road coming in here and there's some cars here. So again, just mark out the corner where the road finishes. So that's the um, little traffic island in the center and the road. And then, of course, this part where the buildings start. So we need to put in a bit of an indication of where the buildings start. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. Just try to, it's not perfect, but just a little line kind of coming through like that. And then later we can draw in all the cars, all that sort of, all that sort of stuff later. Okay, um, this side we probably don't even have to worry too much um, about that. Uh, so, you know, you can do things like add in. Uh, even at this point, you can add in some trees. So you've got like a larger tree here. And I often like to swap. You know, with stuff in the foreground, I often like to swap to things, uh, to a pen. Sorry, things pen that has more. Um, just a bit of a thicker nib, and that will help to push it forwards a bit, okay? Um, now, always remember as well, everything here is pretty much in the dark. So there's not a whole lot of detail that you need to imply in these areas. Um, so essentially just make sure that you get in a few of these little trees um, around the edges and what have you. Just thinking some of them go further up as well, okay? So you can start off here, um, kind of indicating roughly about where the trees are. Hey, no, these are palm trees. And uh, let's go ahead and, and I'm just so I'm just going to put in really basic sort of indications of the the actual tree itself. I'm not going to try to put in too much detail just yet. I'm hoping to leave a lot of that uh, to later. Okay, um, but they all kind of just you know they all kind of just branch up okay? like that. You know, you get some coming in from an angle. Um, one thing I can say, though, is be deliberate with how you draw these little shapes, okay? Uh, again, just a few little scratchy sort of marks in there. Um, I don't want to indicate everything too, too obviously. Okay, we've got little lights and things in here as well, which we can try also to indicate later. Um, but these trunks that are just going up the page like this, super important. So, um, got a few here. And, you know, these are just smaller sort of trees running over on this side. Um, you get the you get the idea. Um, now, another thing we can try to do as well is start putting in uh, the buildings, and uh, we'll simplify this down all to like one big building first and know this one kind of comes in here on the edge just on the side um you know simplify that down like that 
Okay, and then we'll just bring that down. This is like a hotel, I think. This here. Um, and there's actually another walkway behind the trees. It's kind of difficult to see a little walkway or something like that. There. Um, let's have a look what else we can put in here. It's really, um, you know, there's a lot of detail in here. And I think you know, the main thing is to get in that big shape. Okay, that big shape roughly where that um, that building comes in from the side. You see it starts in the corner, comes in near to the middle center, and then just like dips down. And then of course we have some of these other buildings, these smaller kind of buildings here right in the back there. And they kind of go, go near to the road like that. The building here in front as well. Okay, simplify that down. There's even... Um, a whole big sort of darker building here. Um, and you've got another building there, another one here, um, like that. It's all just uh, lights and uh, stuff in the in the background. You know, that's another that's another building, and there's one here as well. Okay, always try to make those buildings in the back smaller because that is going to help you to imply um, a sense of depth and uh, perspective. As we go back into the distance, okay, think of these as shapes, okay. Um, in fact, try not to think too much as well because uh, there, there's so much detail in here. Look at just all this, the whole building, this whole block of buildings here. Look at it as one big shape. How can you draw this in one big shape and then um, flesh out the little details here and there? So um, we have this, I think it's a it's like a replica of the, the Eiffel Tower here. And um, I don't know, is this like a casino? It looks like a casino or something like or something like that. Um, I know in Japan they have like a, an area called Tokyo Tower as well, and they have like a replica. Uh, I, I, well, it looks kind of like a replica of the Eiffel Tower. So um, it's, it's quite amazing. I was looking at photos of, of Vegas, and they were like, um, they have a replica of 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 uh, venice believe it or not um it's 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 quite it's quite amazing uh so you know i'm just trying to put in a few little buildings back here um now this kind of again this little globe in here and i don't really know what this is it's probably obviously this the the start of a building or something like that or maybe like a uh, who knows what i'm really i'm really not sure i've never been before uh, Whitney probably know, um, but this here I'm gonna just try to get in because it seems to also be quite a uh, you know certainly quite a predominant um, feature in this scene. Put in a little stand or something at the bottom underneath. Um, get in. It's kind of this shape a bit more. Just a circular sort of shape. This. Go. Oop. Um, bit here. There we go. The the um the challenge in this is um certainly like certainly preserving areas of the light and the neon and stuff. You know, I'm going to try to do a bit of cutting around in implying stuff that's in there. It's certainly going to be a challenge. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and put in just the base of this one here like that. I might just lengthen this a little. Okay, come little side bits there. Yeah. I will actually, um, when it comes time later, I'll get in a, some of this detail with the paints. Um, we'll get in just the little indication of this tower here as well. I will just lower this, lower it down a little bit, very slightly. This. And that will come down somewhere like here. Okay. Um, something like that. And then, of course, we will start putting in some of these other bits and pieces. I'm going to get this side of that building there, like that. Um, here, uh, what have we got? Just looking at this other building coming up further. 
and uh, let's have a look a little higher and then we've got this building here um, yeah that there and we've got this kind of bottom part of the building here here is it here's the road the road certainly it's around here so these are kind of like um, just bits underneath the building so we can just we can a bit, of, a bit of line work like this there this can be like a the entrance kind of like the valet area there and then of course um the edge of this larger building swap to a swap to another pen to sort of figure this one out um have a look comes all the way down here and then there's like a little section that runs across like this there's a lot of little shapes in here and i think it's great practice um for those of you who don't uh draw all too much uh to have a little bit of a play around and, and practice with a lot of these shapes um helps you to simplify things down um and create the impression, impression of detail through here. Um, another thing I like to do is if you have like another pen, like another one of these thicker pens um, with a flat nib, they're really good also for getting in a little bit of darkness. Okay, so around here, I notice there's certainly bits and pieces. There's like a tree here, the tree kind of here as well. We can just imply something here. Um, Another thing is we do have some other, uh, you know, we have some other trees that just come through here as well, um, and they form a bit of a, right here, that's another tree, okay, and I'll get this in with the watercolors later, it'll just be pretty dark over the top, okay, so we've got a, a tree there, you know, there might be a tree here, the main thing is getting those trunks in, the trunks are going to help to imply, um, obviously like imply that there are some trees or some some uh, foliage there i think that's the important thing okay getting them to kind of line the the road okay that but a lot of it is pretty um it's fairly dark actually in here so there's a you know don't worry too much if you don't get in uh, all the little details of things some of these trees are pretty small and simplify them down this there and put in another one here this one overlaps a little bit there um fantastic so uh yeah and let's work on this one a bit Oop, curves around there and they kind of like separated out aren't they Through like billboards and stuff some squares here that there um fantastic in the background i just like to simplify these things down to just a few little shapes and bits and pieces here side of the road now let's put in um let's put in some cars yeah so we'll start actually down probably down the bottom bottom here i'm going to go in with this uh, car right in the center and i always start with the windscreens uh, first it helps just place everything else but there that's the, the the bonnet of the car then you've got a um, couple of window uh not windows a couple of little lights there the uh underneath section of that car there you go it's sort of like a up a top view of that um, of that car and then you know you've got this section you can see it sort of going out through the back like that that okay so it's kind of like a top down view of that car it's pretty basic um but you get the idea okay um, as you go back as well uh, you will find that uh, the cars just sort of move up the horizon line so this one again let's simplify that down um, this is like a squarish sort of shape like that um with a bit of darkness underneath really the 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 um bonnet and the windscreen are just about connected uh almost like connected together with this dark sort of 
down to the mass here. Um, I haven't done this scene before, by the way. A lot of these scenes that I do live, um, I'm just working it out on the fly. And I hope also that helps you to um, understand my process and how I would reduce things down into little, um, you know, little shapes and what have you. I do a little uh, value sketch at times uh, just to just to understand the composition, um, you know, which really really helps because I think the getting in the tonal value, some of the the uh, the, the tones um, will really help you to plan out your next sort of step. Okay, so remember that a lot of these cars are just going to have this light sort of coming down the front. Um, you know, here is like a, a big van or something. It could be a bus um, that's just, where is it? It's kind of just going out of the scene um, here. Something like that. Just made it pretty simple, like a box or something. Um, you know, even this car here, you barely see it. It's just coming out of the scene again. Windscreen right over here um you're going to get a bit of that top part of the car there and then the sides of it here okay again a little bit of the wheel or something there okay takes time to understand how to draw these shapes and um certainly the thing that i can recommend is keep trying keep trying and keep um practicing um turning these things into shapes. Like these cars, I just see them as boxes. They're just little boxes on, on wheels. Um, this one's just disappeared out the scene. Um, you know, got a cab, it's a cab here, so we can put in, again, the front of the, the car, which is like this area here with the lights there. Um, maybe some wheels underneath like that. Uh, we got, uh, we have on it, which comes up like this. The uh, windscreen here, there. Funny looking car. Down. <laughs> Very funny. A really weird looking car. I made it too a little bit too tall, but not a problem. Um, let's have a look. What else we want to do? Perhaps another one here. How can we simplify this down again? Just uh, front part of the car there with the lights there, and then we've got the on it here and the uh, windscreen here and of course the top section of that car like this there coming down it's like a it looks like one of those people mover people mover um cars okay there we go there's there's one coming in from the side um you know and you might also want to imply one um, disappearing off here as well just a just a little box little box shape here in the corner same to, uh, with this one here okay a little shape disappearing off into the um into the edge um should be good okay um oh and uh, we've got a super chat thank you gail um gail dennis and uh, good to see you really good to see you again how are you how are you carrying along um do let me know guys how you're how you're doing um, with the drawing i appreciate appreciate you guys all being here and if you're um you're needing me to explain a little bit further or go through something just certainly just let me know um fantastic we've also got I'll just just go through a few of the the chats. Um, oh, Ramona, Ramona saying the last one. Uh, she enjoyed the last one. Thank you, uh, thank you for coming along again, Ramona. Um, I guarantee it. Like if you if you um, come along to each of these things every week, by a few months you'll be able to see a big improvement, and that's you know, in part through obviously going through and helping, you know, me explaining things to you, but mainly it's the practice and the consistency. <laughs> so um, it's good to see you. Good to see you back again. Yvonne says, hi, Darren, looking forward to seeing how you handle all those darks. Yeah, um, <laughs> we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. I think it will be, I think it'll be fine. I think usually for the first attempt with these type of things, um, you know, you, I'm, I myself am just trying to figure things out as well but i think going through the process with you guys will um will help okay 
Righto. Um, so let's um, just having a look to see if there's any more chats. And there's also Susan, Susan Crane from California, a US. Good to see you, Susan. Um, Yvonne says, I've been to Vegas several times. Wow. Sounds awesome. Um, what'd you get up to over there? Mary, uh, Mary Goodger uh, from Wales, UK. Um, and yeah, Yvonne's saying that's true. The more you paint, the more you improve. And um, Ramona's saying, bought a new journal just to learn from me. Oh, that's nice. Really nice to hear Ramona and um, I actually make my own journals uh, th these, these these are ones that I um, I get um, you, you can buy large sheets of watercolor paper tear them down into smaller sheets um, and basically from there um, basically from there just stitch the, the pages together there are tutorials that that you can do online I've talked about this in one of my last years but um, yeah probably the, the most convenient thing to do is just to buy the journal certainly a lot easier um, so I will get, uh, carrying, I'll just sort of carry along, um, and continue now. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys are up to. If you are watching along, if you're new here as well, I uh, would love to hear, I would love to hear from you. Um, but I'm going to get, get cracking. What time is it? It's already 11. So I'm hoping we can finish this off in about 20 minutes. Yeah. And, uh, the, and same with the, the painting, probably another half an hour or something. So let's go through, uh, this, these little, these are just kind of little bushes or something here. You see them just getting smaller and smaller like that. Um, another thing here is that there are little cars like this, the little cars here. And, um, there's not certainly not too much detail back in this area, but you can just indicate a few kind of background like that. Just little sections of car, something like this. There, that, that, that. Um, you can see like kind of little cars just going off into the distance. Um, I'm not even looking at the reference photo here because I'm trying so hard to simplify this uh certainly simplify this down as much as i can um but then you might pick out one car here that's a little bit larger and you can um uh, go ahead and and uh, paint this one in uh, draw this one in i mean that little cars off in the distance uh, it's kind of it's very tricky to see exactly what is going on in here um but again simplification couple in here again a lot of these trees and stuff are going to overlap so we're not going to see necessarily too much um certainly too much going on um fantastic i don't know whether i should put a car here as well on that right hand um on that right hand side i mean we can certainly let me just let me see if i can try to, to put in here kind of like a mirror image of um of that one small van or something like that there we go that's something eh Ooh. just a little box on wheels it looks like a little box on wheels and i'll tend to also uh, use another pen to do the ones in the background and create sort of smaller, uh, make them a lot smaller as well, like this. Okay. Little s smaller cars off into the distance. Get a little bit of that side bit on that car as well. At some point, they become, they, the detail is just uh, very much reduced in the background. Okay. But just think of these as, uh, yeah, just think of them as boxes. Look at them though, that's a bus. It's a box. And then I'm just drawing the shape of that box. Okay, first. It's actually not it should be more kind of 
and this angle. Try to draw that. There's the windscreen here. This and a couple of lights here. Okay, and there's just this darkness underneath there. You know, you've got cars here as well. Just little indications of cars. As you move into the background, you, you'll notice it just, uh, the detail just disappears. Okay, little squares, and then they just almost become tiny little lights. And that's it. You can only see the, the uh, lights. I will draw, uh, make some really little ones here. Okay, off into the distance. Okay, even some cars here behind the bus. A couple of little ones just in uh, following behind here. Overlapping shapes are so important as well. Okay, to get in an indication of the uh, that depth there. Look, that's another car. Um, you know, another thing you can do is a little kind of these perspective lines. So you know how we've drawn all these, kind of all these lines going out from that um, center point there. You can start putting a few more down the road. Just like this. Okay. There. Coming through the cars. Okay. And have faith, guys. Have faith in in the in the drawing and the painting. Um, the most important thing is just to continue along. Whether it works out or not, um, you, the the key to improvement is through uh, consistent practice and through making mistakes, making lots of mistakes. And if you, um, you know, I, I was guilty of this a lot of times in the beginning, where I'd be drawing, painting something, and I just didn't like it, and I stopped. Then I wasn't there to experience that lesson to understand what I could do better and look at the painting as a whole, the drawing as a whole afterwards. Okay, so I think this kind of looks this kind of looks all right. Um, I, I was I was certainly a bit um, uh, really a little bit worried as to how I would do this, but. It is looking, certainly is looking a bit like that scene. So going through, let's put in some more of these trees. You, you will find as well, as the scene starts to emerge and starts to make a bit more sense, you, you, you um, gain more confidence and you continue along. It kind of helps to, to, to kind of um, push you along when you see, you find something there. Always find something, look at it and just be like, hey, look, I like, I like the way I did that car. Um, I like the way that this road looks or that building looks. Anything that you can find in there to just continue to uh, encourage yourself to 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 uh, continue along um, is a is really a great thing. Okay, and I think painting is part of uh, a community, whether it's online, what we're doing here, or with you know doing it in person as well. I find that's also a really good, um, really a really good way. To motivate yourself to continue on so um here we got this last uh, bit over here certainly a little tricky to do where we have uh the top of this building coming in i am gonna just go in and make it thicker and we will reduce the size of this building down a little bit so that just goes small down the back and over here we have um Really on top of this building, a lot of a lot of stuff here. It's really uh, this edge here, that, and then there's a kind of couple of these window type things, whatever they are. A bit of railing or something on top here. A lot of it's just uh, like plants and shrubs and things like that. Yeah, but what what I really want to get in is these uh, this little tower here which runs right through the center. So it kind of starts about here. If we cut the building in half, it begins right down the center of the building, like that. And then you've got edge of it like this, or some of these little windows here, three, four, and um, the dome on top. It's uh, almost coming out of the, the, the scene. Jeez, 
um, not much room there at all, is there? And connect this on. Let's connect. Go. That's a bit of that going on there. We've also got this section which sort of comes out. Oh, there's a little window here as well. And perhaps here. There, and then that sort of just connects on there. Oops. The roof of it. There. Is that the Bellagio? I think that's the Bellagio. I've heard of it. Uh, Bit of darkness there, edge of that building. Okay, good. Okay, and there's one thing I did not include here, but it was like a sort of edge of the tower or something. You can just barely see it. Um, a lot of this stuff is not certainly uh, mandatory or anything to put in. You just look into the, the look into it and find bits and pieces. Obviously, they got some parts that are that are tricky to omit. Like I mean, these two bits they'd be tricky to omit. Just keep them in there. But then you've got things like, uh, you know, what could you, what else could you, could you take out? Like all the detail and things on the buildings here. You might just want to focus on that as one big shape rather than drawing all the buildings. So it's really up to you. Um, let's have a look. Jeez. Now this one is, this one is tricky, isn't it? What is going on here? There's so much, so much happening. I can get a few verticals. Let's get a few verticals running on, on the back end first. And they kind of uh, come in like this on a bit of an angle. Let's see. What? They kind of interact with those trees like that. There. So, look, it's not. It's not exactly as per the reference, but um, I think just having some of these lines running in different directions as well is going to, something going to help imply what is going on there. Okay, but you're using those trees to cut around those, uh, so I don't have to draw all the lines down. Then, now we can outline the trees a little bit more like this. Okay, that's the advantage of doing the trees first as well. Underneath is a uh, whole different ball game, really. I mean, I'm just gonna simplify, guys. I'm just gonna simplify. I don't want to spend all day doing this. This looks like a, a bit of a. I don't know what it is, but we just know it's dark. Okay, it's kind of like a rectangular dark sort of object right there. There's a uh, looks over here to be like some shop fronts or something like that, and then a bit of darkness under there as well. So um, that's something else. To put in um but i think that's pretty much it i mean that side of the the scene i'm i'm fairly you know i'm fairly happy with um the right side of the scene really is is up to you what else you want to put in there I, like i said i have these other cool little pens i love these because they just um allow you to get in details so easily i mean for this one here know that there's i've forgotten to put in this side of the building something like that right but i do have this pen where is it little flat nib pen and if i just go through i can put in some windows here it is that nib pen um but if you just got a normal line i use that I'm trying to find the edge of that nib there you go one two three four that just easy Just got a normal nib pen just go ahead and do that just use that as uh, normal as well again this stuff is up to you whether you want to go this far to add in all these windows and things out in the background um it's up to you you don't need to do them but uh it's just something i kind of want to try and um, maybe use a bit of more a bit more line work as well on some of the buildings um something just with the least amount of marks on the paper i think would be good something like that um even here you'll notice there's actually quite windows and things 
how can I simplify? That's the, that's the question here. Yeah? How do you how can you simplify them down? That's what I do. Just a real quick impression like that. Um, yeah. There. Um, what else do we have? I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read what's on these uh, these billboards. Um, okay. This has a really funny pattern as well. Look at that. all kinds of stuff going on in there. We can leave that for the watercolors. Okay? Um, hmm. Apart from that, I don't think I have a whole lot else to put in there. Um, you know, certainly with these buildings in the background, I've put in a few small bits and pieces like this. Again, the windows, just to drop them in. Quickly like that. There's not a huge amount of detail back um, back there as well. And it comes down there. Darkness there. Who knows what? Okay, guys. Um, I think we're going to get started on the the painting. And I will have a quick look at the chats as well to make sure uh, you guys are traveling okay. We have uh, Delona, D Delona Halliday from Seattle, Washington area. Good to, good to hear from you, uh, Delona. And I uh, hope I've hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. And um, and uh, I hope you're enjoying the, the session. We've also got Abi Wianto um, from Indonesia. And I'm so glad to follow this program. Fantastic. Good to have you. Good to have you here. And um, I love doing these lives as well because they allow me to really interact with with you guys. I don't sometimes. Um, I'm, it's difficult for me to get through a lot of the the comments and and things. I try my best to to get back to everyone, but I think these are the best uh, sort of sessions where you can catch me and um, essentially ask me questions while I'm around. So uh, while I'm here, you know. Ask away, ask away. Uh, Yvette says it looks good. Thank you, Yvette. Um, we also got Tracy, Tracy McCord. Um, this is awesome watching from Queens, New York. Awesome, Tracy. Um, good to hear from you. There's such a such a variety of um, locations that you guys are you guys are watching from, and. Do you like this time as well? Uh, that's what I wanted to ask. Uh, for those of you guys uh, who are watching at this time, is it, is it the, is it, um, uh, yeah, is it a convenient time for you, or something a little bit earlier, something a little bit later? Um, I really want to find out because over the next few weeks, I do have a bit more time to do some streams. So, um, if I can get some done uh, at a time that's more suitable for you, because I'm, I'm a little bit freer. I'll certainly rearrange some of the time slots and perhaps do some some bonus sketches and things because I I do paint pretty much every day. So let me know what kind of times work for you. We've also got uh, oh Ellen's here. Ellen Whitney in the chats for YouTube <laughs> says thank you again for doing both of these. Thanks Ellen. Um, <laughs> I hope this one works out. We'll see how we go. Um, but this is good fun. Ellen says yes, I love this time slot. Yeah, unfortunately, the Wednesday ones that I do, they're often after my, my day job. And so that's actually tricky uh, a lot of the time for me to, uh, to to reach some of you guys. Because obviously, it's like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. or something in the morning. Um, I have seen Yvonne. You know, I've seen Yvonne in some of these sessions very, very early in the morning. Um, <laughs> normally, it's very hard to get, get in touch with people. Okay. Just have a drink of water. Let me turn on the air conditioning. It's getting a bit warm.
All righty. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, this has been great. Uh, Del Delona says, this has been great. I appreciate how much you think out loud and you pronounce my name, uh, Corey. Correctly, Corey. <laughs> okay, sorry. Correctly. <laughs> No worries. Yeah, it's kind of like a, you know, perhaps it's like a stream of consciousness thing. And uh, well, I, I try to go through my, my process while I'm thinking as well, because this is something I have not, I haven't done this scene before. So uh, I think for you guys being able to hear what go, what's going through my head and how I'm like thinking of structuring things, um, I think that can be a good help for you. I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, but I think... I think this will turn out to be something, okay? We don't have to get in all the detail with the pen, remember? We've still got the watercolors um, to put in the detail. And often with super detailed scenes like this, um, I, I I like to do, I try to get a lot of the work done with the brush, okay? But the main thing I want to show you is when you're doing uh, night scenes, how to preserve these light areas. So I'd like you to start out. Um, let me, I'll just quickly have a look at the chats if there's any more, um, especially if, if you're on YouTube as well, say hi, let me know uh, if you're watching and uh, how you're doing. Um, fine for me, so it looks like a lot of people are saying that the times are pretty good, this time's pretty good, so <clears throat> perhaps I'll do some more streams around around this time, because I've got a bit more, a bit more, um, a, bit, a bit freer in the next few weeks. Um, good for me in New York, says Tracy, appreciate your videos and sharing with us. Thank you, Tracy. Um, and yeah, if you guys like the video and um, you know anyone that might like it as well, please share it around. That does uh, that's really help me out. Um, it can be tricky to get through to people because there's a lot of streamers and things like that around. Um, and I, I look, I, I try to spend most of my time painting rather than um, on social media. But it does, uh, I, I think as well, that's something that I'm, I'm learning and um, trying to find better ways to reach people um, it can be it can be tricky sort of balancing both sides you notice a lot of artists um, actually spend the, the ones anywhere that get seen online they spend probably 80 80 plus percent of their time actually on social media and marketing and doing all this stuff rather than actually painting and um i my aim is really to spend more time painting because that's what i love doing and um I think these streams allow me to kind of get the best of both worlds. So um, I can paint and I can share with you guys my process as well. Okay, uh, Kate says, love working with you. Thank you, Kate. Yvonne says, good time for me, but I, I'll be with the grandkids for Christmas, so I won't do much painting. Yeah, that, that's cool, Yvonne. The, the uh, videos will still be available after the stream, so um, yeah, not a problem. Um, family's, family's more important. Um, Lona says this time is okay. I'm sitting at my desk at work before heading home. <laughs> okay. Um, hope you, hope you got some, hope you got, uh, some, some office pens, some office pens and a bit of paper with you, <laughs> you know, even just practicing the drawing and using tonal, um, you practicing kind of tonal sketches with just a pen alone really helps. Okay. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit blabbing. I'm going to quit blabbing, but thank you. Thank you for the, um, the uh, feedback comments that kind of thing um always love to hear back from everyone suggestions and what i could do better as well uh because i don't know if, if i don't know then i um i'd improve right so i never take any of these things personally okay so uh, what i'd like you to do now you grab your palette out i think you can see mine kind of at the side here it's being a bit tricky but you'll be able to see little sections here and i'll explain what i mix and um what I want you to do is grab a brush, a large brush like this. This is a number 10 brush. Um, if you've got a number 8 brush, that also works pretty well. And uh, what we're going to do is just start putting in some real basic colors. So um, looking at the reference photo, uh, we're going to just have a quick little look and see what colors we want. I'm going to start here. Let's go with a bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow for this, um, this part of the, the scene. This building here in the back okay there and it's a Hansa yellow light it's a very uh, medium sorry Hansa yellow medium it's a very um 
the rich sort of purple that you can put in here. Here's let's put a bit in here as well. Why not in there? Uh, anywhere that you see yellow, I want you to just grab that yellow and just dunk it in there, basically. Okay. And um, of course, you can get uh, see this yellow is a bit darker. If you look at tonal uh, regions of tone, you notice um, not all the yellows are exactly the same. That's darker. Um, this building in the background is has a kind of warmer color here, which I'll just connect on. <clears throat> okay, that's going to be the largest contrast, that yellow building, though. Um, let's have a look. Where else can we find some yellow? Maybe in that sign there. Maybe you got this top of that building there like that. Um, you know, that's kind of... Uh, you know, it's actually more of a grayish color. So maybe I can put some gray here like that. Okay. And there's a bit of uh, color here. I'm putting a bit of, this is a bit of white, a bit of um, buff titanium. Just dunk that in like that. Okay. At this stage, we, we are not looking for, to add details. We're just looking to add colors, a light wash of colors. And um, when we talk about tones, like I, like I mentioned before, we're, we're using tones that are very, very light. Okay, we're talking about about majority water. So I'm mixing up this little blue on the side here, and I'd say that's about 80% water. 60 to 80% water. Okay. We've got some nice little uh, lilac color here. It's called lavender. Let's put in some of that. Let's put in a bit of that. Notice also uh, that some tones... Uh, sorry, some hues, some colors are naturally lighter than others, okay? An example being this yellow and this blue lilac kind of color. They are all, um, no matter how dark you try to get them, they're never going to get as dark as, say, um, you know, like an ultramarine blue or something like that. Okay, so what have we got here? This is tricky, yeah? This... Um, this bit here, I'm going to just add in a little wash of blue, and then later I, I will go over the top with it. Let's, uh, let's just start off like that, just a light wash. I don't want to overthink it. Um, let's have a look. What else do we have here? Some more blue. We can pick up some red, some exciting kind of red uh, to drop it in here. Okay. We're, we're trying to create a, 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 a um, interesting sort of vibrant scene. So... Have some fun. Don't overthink it. Let's put a bit of orange there, for example. This is a bit of pyral scarlet. Um, underneath here, there's like bits of white, as you notice for the signboards or what have you. Don't worry, just uh, continue on and cut around those, cut around them like that. And also you'll notice there's some trees here. So conveniently, I'll get some of these in. A bit of green or something there. I don't know what's back here. It's just looking kind of gray. So let's put in some gray <clears throat> around here. A bit of gray. This is also uh, can be also known as neutral tint. Um, you can mix up your grays as well. If you've got your primary red, yellow, and blue, that is all you need. Often, um, some of these companies will try to get you to buy like a thousand and one different colors. You don't need them. I use very similar colors in all my all my paintings um you're mixing this is a color called undersea green okay i'm going to put in some little bits and pieces there for the for the trees okay but um you know, all we're doing is just trying to get in a, a really really uh, light layer of paint and fun bits and pieces going on in the background. All your light colors, really vibrant. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm also to increase the vibrancy, I'm picking up that paint straight from the palette, okay? Straight from that palette. So uh, there's not a huge amount of mixing going through, okay? But some of this stuff in the background, I will uh, just uh, add in a bit more color and vibrancy as well modify it and change it around okay um one of the things as well we really need to do is get the headlights of these uh of, of these cars in okay i'm just going to plan how well i'm going to do this um 
I did a little tonal sketch, five minute tonal sketch of this last night. Uh, let's put in some yellows. This is a kind of muted yellow. So yellow ochre plus a bit of Hansa yellow light. For these two top bits of the, uh, the building. That again is kind of warm there. Really the rest of the building, um, there are some warm areas like here, perhaps here. Um, in the, let's have a look, the, the tree trunks, let's, let's put in a, a light wash of, um, this is just, what is this, the burnt sienna, a bit of burnt sienna in for the trunks like that, okay, that, I'm trying to just get in all that top section quickly, okay, all that, this part dries, I'll actually go through, so we have a bit of purple, a bit of purple would be nice just to go and darken down somewhere in here too. A bit of mixing and what have you going. Uh, good, good, good. Now I'm just looking in here. Notice there's a bit of warmth in that building. Very slight hint of warmth. Maybe we could put in a bit here. Not to, you know, not to say that you can't alter it, but... Uh, I think it's a good idea to to change things up there's a bit of blue you know i also have some ultramarine blue here which is like a more vibranty sort of blue so why not try some of that why not put some of that in there there and uh here okay here here let that yellow mix in with it that okay great and of course the trees let's uh we're here so we might as well put a bit of that green in for the trees this is a green called undersea green that i use and i love the granulation on this we we'll put in a bit of that there and uh you know get that to mix around hopefully a bit through that section and behind, let's cool it down again with a bit of that blue. I've got some purple and blue sort of here. Just uh, cool that down a bit in here. A bit in there. Fantastic. So we've got some nice colors and bits and pieces in here already. Okay. And remember, we're not detailing. We are just adding in a first kind of wash, first bit of color in here, okay? Um, now here comes the, the tricky bit that we have to uh, get right, and the bit that I'm actually kind of unsure about. These headlamps, now they are a very warm color. Some of them are not even yellow, um, but I may just, uh, make them yellow anyway but you can see the kind of reflected light on the ground um from the cars they're kind of all coming down like that and even in the background here it's just all you get a lot of warmth coming through that back section okay like that um, so i want to just get in a bit of that color um and what I'll do is also mix up here at the bottom, a bit of purple. And I'm gonna go through, the, get in around the sides, um, a bit of darkness, this kind of graphic island thing here. Okay, but also keeping in mind to cut around the trees. Um, I don't wanna color all the trees in completely. Um, but it does have to be somewhat dark around this edge, like this. Okay. Um, and this is actually the start of the road here, right here. Okay. Let's get in a bit of, uh, get in a bit of darkness on this side as well, just to, just to keep it consistent a bit here. Okay. Um, some more yellow and a bit more yellow running down the page kind of like to indicate these the lights the cars running down i also like to if you have a, a spray bottle um, one of my little tricks is to use the spray bottle 
which will help to um, spread everything around. Um, Yvette's asking who makes undersea green. Und undersea green is uh, just a, a Daniel Smith color that I have, that I bought recently. So um, it's a surprise one because for me it was a surprise one because normally um, you know I don't use greens all that often, but um, this one just granulates out so beautifully that uh, I use it all the time now. So. This is just some of these lights, okay, reflecting down that. Now, what I'm going to do, I am going to drop in some darker paint on top of all this, a bit of purple and a bit of neutral tint. We'll see. We'll hope for the best. So, a bit of darker color. Um, if you have a smaller brush as well, you can use that. This is a little number six brush. Okay, let's try here. Yeah. Um, it's spreading a bit much. You can always lift off the page if it's um, getting too much. Leave the kind of whites on the cars as well. Um, and the reason for that is so that later uh, we can hopefully get in some other colors over the top. Okay. So this is a uh, can be tricky. Wet and wet work, and uh, you know, for a lot of beginners, can be certainly um, a bit frightening because you don't know exactly what is going to happen. Um, but with that said, you can still generally predict, you know, the flow of the paint and preserve some of this like warmth in here as well. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to imply. Um, some of this warmth coming off from the headlights, the cars going forwards. Okay, this one here actually should have a bit more, but let's drop it in like that. There, practice this technique because it will um, help you immensely in your painting. Watercolors, one of the strengths i believe of watercolors is wet and wet it's something it's something very unique and um you can't really do this in any other medium I, i've not been able to really replicate this sort of effect in any other medium and that's what kind of draws me towards it actually the um the wet and wet effects okay now you might think hey they don't look too much like reflected light you know, we can still go in later. We can get in a little bit more, a little bit more detail, uh, certainly later on. Okay. But we just want to put in the colors for now. Um, what I'll do is also is look at maybe darkening this um, section here on that right hand side, this little traffic island. So we'll darken that more. This. Okay. Like that. Um, there is a bit of darkness in here as well, just underneath where the other cars are in this section so i'm going to just cut around a little bit of detail that there try to connect that up a bit more fortunately this area has dried but you can still certainly carry on um what else do we have let's put in a bit of green bit of that undersea green here do that in there okay a bit in there like that simplify that down um we do have a bit of a tree here actually don't we so we're running through that center there, there as well. Okay. There's always, um, always remember that there's a limit of uh, the amount of detail that you can add in each wash. So don't try to add too much detail. Um, that's why I say focus on just getting a, a quick wash in and then later uh, we can put in more details and things like that. Makes it easier, much easier on yourself to, to tackle. Okay. This is again kind of like the side of the um, the road or these little uh, looks like there's little shrubs in here as well. Small little shrubs running in between the um, running in between these uh, what do you call them trees trees. Right. Oh, I think this looks I think this looks all right. Um, now we're going to do something 
uh, we're going to do something fun. We're going to put in, we're going to put in the, the, the sky. Now, by this time, you will notice actually a lot of your, the buildings here in the back would have already been dried off. Now we need to make the sky super dark. I'm going to be using a color called Carbazole Violet. And um, you can use any very, very dark color. But I'll try that first. Let's have a look. That's pretty dark. Okay. I'm going to go in there with this color. Whatever dark color you have, uh, sometimes, you know, you might have a, uh, you know, you might just have your primaries mixed together. That's a good option as well. Just going to go around the top section there. I'm really trying to get in as dark of a color as I can. And also try not to fiddle too much, yeah? This has got to be um, the darkest section of the painting, the sky. There's nothing else that's as dark as the sky, except for maybe some windscreens and things like that. You only get one chance really to do this. So go in there, just give it a shot. Okay. I actually prefer when the, uh, when the paint is actually a little wet uh, on the previous wash, actually, but it's kind of dried off. You can spray things down again to make it come out a second time. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I, I won't do it, actually. Let's have a look. Just, have, just try this bit first, and we'll see if it looks okay. All right. All right. Hold that brush at the end. Well, helps to uh, keep your brush strokes loose. You might notice there's also little bits of white in the page. Can you see that? Little bits of white. Keep them as well. They kind of just act as highlights or um, areas of interest. Little bits like that. Okay, a bit dark. They almost help to imply detail if you leave some of those lighter bits, uh, lighter little speckles running through like that. Can you see them? Just these little bits like that. Kind of, kind of magic. And I do this. I did the same thing when I was painting the scene of Santorini, and I was doing the water. <clears throat> Getting there. Getting there, guys. Um, awesome. Shinolan says, I can't stay for very long, but you're doing an awesome job. I'll have to watch the replay. Uh, what colors are you using for the sky? Thank you, Shinolan, for, for coming along. I know you probably got other uh, stuff on today. Um, it's This color I'm using here is a, a color called Carbazole Violet. Now, I've done a review of these uh, of Carbazole Violet and uh, Undersea Green in one of my other videos. Um, Daniel Smith sells a set of them for about here in Australia about thirty bucks, um, thirty something dollars plus shipping, which for, for me it's a bargain um, because normally in the shops here they charge an arm and a leg. I bought them off Amazon, so you can have a look at the review on my um, my YouTube channel, or whatever, and I'll, I'll actually go through. Um, yeah, I actually go through what it is, uh, a review and where to buy them. Okie dokie. So that sky, I think looks all right. Um, so it comes, here comes, of course, the, the, the last bit where we are just adding in the final bits of darkness and, um, everything in here. I'm going to mix up some carbs or violet with a bit of neutral tint. Um, again, if you've just got neutral tint or just another color, use whatever you've got. There's something lacking in these buildings, and that is basically some darks, some really juicy darks running through here. So our job now is to add these in, okay? And um, at the same time, we want to preserve, of course, the 
lighter colors in the background. Okay, we don't want to go over everything and then turn it all completely dark. Okay. Bear in mind, there's also these little trees here. And the trees um, are going to have, they, they do have a dark sort of color in them as well. So a little bit like that there. That, that's kind of already, see how it was slightly wet before? That's good because now it kind of um, spreads around a little bit when I drop in indications of the um, palm leaves and stuff. Yeah? It goes to show you don't need to, you don't need to draw everything in um, with the pen. You, you can leave it, leave a lot of it till later okay? because it's going to need to be a lot darker anyhow. So just try put in a few little strokes and leave some of that previous wash in there as well. That will really help. Um, the base of them actually have a, a warmth, a kind of warmth to them. Tricky to, to describe, but it's there's certainly warmth to them that I'll bring down like that, that. Um, there's actually a few more here. I haven't really um, added in, but a little, little uh, dash of cover there. Just darken that down a bit. Trunks of these buildings will be uh, important. Just the little brown there, kind of just to indicate that they are, they're present, yeah? Something like that. A little bit of a trunk. Okay. There's uh, this, all this section at the back here, which I believe is also too light. So I'm going to go in there, put in some more color like that. Um, again, underneath here, there's some bits and pieces that I'm going to add in. A okay, little bit of, little bit underneath the buildings like that. Uh, find that even in the background buildings, there will be some darker bits and pieces that need to be implied, something like this, okay? But the darker sections are, are actually, are tonally, they're lighter than these ones. So I'm watering down that dark color a little bit. And my aim is getting everything to connect because if we have everything uh, disjointed, I don't know how to, I'm just trying to explain how, how it is. We've, we've got all these light colors and dark colors, everything, and the sky, which is super dark, we want, we want some of the darkness to flow into the buildings and then into the bottom, you know, it's finding connections um, through the buildings. It's so important. Like here, look, I found one, this bit of darkness here. See, that helps get sort of get closer to the sky. That like a little bit there. Where is, I, I want to really mix up a nice thick sort of paint like that. A little bit there. Um, you know, we've got some of the windows there as well, you know, perhaps a bit here, there's a, there's a uh, section on top of the roof, a little bit of darkness like that, perhaps a bit in here. Um, and, and, you know, you might have like little squares and things here for the sections of the windows. Look at that, just small little, you don't have to do it for all of them. Um, but you know what I'm, you kind of get where I'm coming from. It's just implying some of that detail there on the windows okay, because it is going to be a nightmare to sit here and try to draw them all out so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to imply the direction of how some of these windows are coming down and this is linking the sky to the buildings the dark sky here, um, and then we got this, you know, bit of shrub there, and then that comes down into the buildings like this. It's about finding connection and, and leaving also some of that previous color. You can see I'm not um, trying to get rid of that previous color. It's it's a beautiful mix of lights and all kinds of things in there, and it's a I believe it's a mistake to go over the top of it. It was something I did a lot when I was um, starting out, just um, just coloring over things and not leaving the back the backing washes because you need you, you need them. You need all of the washes together 
in order for it to make sense, you get the full, as, as I say, tonal value range, a, a range of values. You need your light colors, you need your dark colors, then you need your um, the colors all in the middle. So that's what I'm doing. Look, I'm just a little imp implying, of, you know, whatever these windows are, you know, they're not, certainly not the most accurate thing, but uh, as you can see, it's connecting with the sky a little bit. So we can do the same thing here. For example, this little globe that I've been trying to, I've actually been kind of avoiding, you know, uh, how am I going to do this? Bit of purple, bit of neutral tint. I'm going to do this. Oh, please. Should have probably waited for that area to dry first, actually. I will, I will wait for it to dry because I've kind of just wet my hand. Um, yeah, there's a bit of darkness here. It's just finding some little contrast. If it's too dark, lift off. Like I made a mistake there. That was too dark. Lift off a bit. That sounded like a tree or something there in the background. I don't know what it is. Again, a little bit more darkness here in that edge. Something there. Okay. Um, of course, we want to indicate some of the, uh, the, the, the windscreens and things of the cars. Um, so why not try that now? Just put in a few little dark bits and pieces here. Okay. Um, the cars are also not this light, which means I'm going to have to darken them down a little as well. Have a quick look at what's going on with these cars. It's really just putting in some extra colors, uh, whatever colors you want to make them, really. So that's a bit of that's a bit of orange or yellow in there, like that. And look at that. It's allowing it to blend nicely and do its thing. I and mean, this can be some blue. We've got all this warmth in there. Why not put in some kind of blue or lilac color in for some of the cars? Um, you know, here's another blue one here well something like that mm. there there's a slight little shadow underneath some of the cars as well i'm gonna i want to see if there's something i can do about that actually a little dry brush a few little dry brush strokes running down the page i think will be a good idea why them but leaving the white from before is a is a, a good idea because it allows me to get colors in like this. It all just doesn't mix into the same one, same sort of color. Keeps things interesting. I like playing around with different colors and seeing how it how it all adds up. Um, now, as I was saying before, now the the bottom of the car. This is something interesting. We bit of darker paint. Running down. Um, some middle sections of the cars. Another thing I could do, I probably re-wet the page. This is just kind of, what I'm trying to do here is just try to add in like a little shadow or something underneath the car. We ground them a little bit. Ground them a little bit. I think what I did here, I probably should have been a bit more careful. Um, there's also a comment from Edna. Edna's saying, I love how the colors merged under the paints and how the darkest tone of the Palm tree leaves show the contrast of the light and dark. I'm also amazed at how you created all those details and yet maintained unity and balance. Thank you, Edna. Uh, it's a uh, it's tricky. It's tricky. Like I'm constantly assessing, reassessing, and looking at whether it's making sense or not. Um, whether it's something I want to, you know, if I'm conveying what I plan to convey, <laughs> and sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't quite work out, but um, it's experimentation. You know, with this stuff here, that light coming down, I don't know if I should have done that or not, but um, 
I'm glad I, I kind of tried it. The other thing is, you know, you, you'll notice there's actually some shadows, even for this car, there's a kind of like vertical shadow run down, running downwards like that. So some of the, you know, with the shadows as well, you've got to kind of make it very, very subtle um, and try not to interfere with the light that's coming off them. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to play around these shadows um, with a bit of dry brush, but not get rid of the beautiful light background. So coming through. So that's my challenge right, right here. It's tricky, very tricky. Because we might have a bit of, you know, you know, light emanating from the back. I'm thinking maybe the light source is some light sources from the back or something, and that's causing a bit of a shadow underneath uh, some of these cars. Very light shadow. Don't uh, go too dark. Remember to keep keep those yellows on there. That the beautiful kind of headlamp yellows. That okay. Um, I will actually uh, probably leave this for now. What else do I want to do? I think in here we need to just um, get in a bit of darkness and things behind the trees. Just a few little splotches of color that that running through the middle. And looking back. Always look back at your painting, step back a little bit, and uh, often when your eyes are focused in, when you're painting very close to a, a scene, what happens is that you get to this tunnel vision where you only see part of the composition, but it's important you look at the entire composition, so you stand back, have a look, and see whether the whole thing kind of makes sense um, from a distance, because that's what uh, that's what will matter at, in the end, whether the components join up, Effectively, you want them to. <clears throat> so look a bit of this here. What time is it? Twelve. Um, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, guys. I hope you. I hope you're getting some value out of this, and I hope that you're you're um you're enjoying it. If you, if you are, please you know like the video and share it around. Um, and if you have questions, certainly ask me. Ask me um, what what you anything really. Um, I'm here. I'm at your service. <laughs> so I, I do also for those of you who are new. Um, <clears throat> I will spruik. I will spruik a little bit about my Patreon. And check out my Patreon. What uh, Patreon.com/slash/watercolormentor. I've got a whole bunch of courses on there that will help you improve your watercolors um there's a lot of value in there i've got 36 courses something like there's hundreds of videos i think last time i checked there was a few hundred 300 and something videos in there tutorials um so yeah would appreciate it if you were interested in supporting me and you wanted to learn a bit more as well I bet they're all on there otherwise i still do these still do a lot of these these uh, online workshops for free so you're always welcome to come along. I, I, um, I love the, the, uh, just meeting some of you and being able to, um, <clears throat> being able to do what I, what I do, what I love to do, which is to paint and to show you, um, how to get there, get there as well. It's a, it's really an honor. Uh, okie dokie. Um, Mm -mm. Yvette says, thanks, nice. Looking, uh, looks good, really interesting to paint a night scene. Yeah, it is, it is. I don't think we've really done many night scenes, have we? Been requested. And Ellen says, yes, it's great. I'm learning a lot. Fantastic, Ellen. <laughs> I'm glad it kind of looks like Vegas. <laughs> I was worried about it, but I was really worried how I'm going to, I was doing it before. But um, if you have the generic knowledge that I have uh, regarding tone, how to draw basic forms, um, you can just apply that knowledge to anything. You can paint anything, really. Uh, the, the basic skills and techniques are so important in watercolors, and I find that people often try to... Um, they, they, they attempt a, a, a difficult subject, and, and but they haven't practiced. They haven't got the brush mileage in yet. Um, and what I mean by that is is being able to understand... 
uh, basic, some basic watercolor techniques, um, how to execute them. Because if you wait until, you know, if you hype yourself up and wait until you've got that, that painting, that, uh, got a weekend, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this painting. It's going to look great, this and that. Um, but you haven't practiced your techniques. When it comes time to, to pull it off, you'll struggle. And that's what I did in the beginning. I tried to paint stuff that was really complicated without practicing the techniques. So I'd always recommend if you're starting out, wet and wet, try some wet and wet techniques, try some wet and dry techniques, mix things around. Don't even bother, um, not bother, but I mean, don't worry too much about, um, about what subject and things. Pick any subject. And just try and use that as an opportunity to practice your wet and wet techniques, wet and dry techniques. And um, something will emerge from that. You, the, the knowledge that you gain through these scribbles on the page that look like nothing um, is, is immeasurable. I've learned so much from just sketching all kinds of rubbish, you know, all kinds of stuff that just did not you know, I wouldn't show anyone. Um, but without that, without that, I would not, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to convert all these, these, these uh, scenes into what they are. Okay, so um, I'm adding a bit more, a bit more darkness in here, some of these trees, a whole lot, but just a bit like that. Um, perhaps some of the trunks as well. Just look a bit weak in some areas, so it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea, um, anyway, to just darken some of them off in areas. A bit of this stuff here as well, like that. There, yeah. but leave, of course, leave the previous wash um, in areas. You notice I kind of like skip over bits and pieces, yeah? It's, it's a trick that you learn to leave bits of the white or the previous wash and I like I had very little self-control when I initially started I just I just get frustrated and paint over everything and um end up not preserving any colors it just look the same color um you know you can keep on doing this you can keep on working and I'm looking at the reference picture and I'm thinking okay maybe some darkness here would be good yeah because this building here is darker a little bit darker but it will help bring out this kind of tower here as well. Okay, I haven't really put much detail in this tower as well. That's something um, kind of tricky. Uh, maybe a little indication, a lot in there. This would probably have been more suited to um, the pen work earlier. Okay, and that little, perhaps little marks on here. Would help that just to give it some more detail and some more uh, presence in here okay um also in these buildings we got to add some darks little little mid-tones running through here connecting with the sky there it here okay kind of cutting across the building because you notice buildings they don't actually see that's not actually completely light i mean even here this building has a bit of darkness here see just a little touch of darkness there and the right hand side is is um what you might call it what i mean lighter so um and i'm spending a lot of time on this uh, i think that's basically the gist of it um the the last thing that you might want to do is if you've got a bit of gouache a bit of white gouache use this to add in some final highlights i'm going to pause the audio for a little bit guys and then i'll get back to you and um, we will put in i'll just show you just some of the highlights i put in so one moment
Evan says I uh I worry too much. <laughs> I do, I do at times. <laughs> you know, you you'd be you'd be surprised, Evan, but when I started doing these lives, uh I probably mentioned this before, I was uh, I was so nervous. I was so nervous and um sometimes I still get a little bit nervous. Uh but the first few lives that I did, they just turned out terribly. Like it's like I forgot how to draw and paint. They're still up there. <laughs> um, but I do my best to pull something off while I'm here, and it's good for me as well because I'm kind of I'm challenging myself to do stuff that I'm not I don't normally do in terms of subjects, and I'm just pulling stuff off on the fly like this. So, a bit of white gouache, and uh, it's opaque color. And I'm going to look at the reference. Where can we get in some extra bits of white and contrast and things? And I can bring that out, bring this out a bit more. Uh, where else can we drop in some bits of white? Um, sometimes on the trees and stuff as well. And you might look at little, you know, look here in the in the ground. There's like these little lights or something here. Okay, they're they're just they're not too obvious, but um, what happens, you notice, because we've got all this darkness here, as soon as we add a few little splotches of white in here, the, the, there's a balance. There's a slight balance here. Because we've got light and dark interactions everywhere, and so we're having these little bits of light or indications of light in here. And you, and you can also mix up your gouache with a bit of yellow um, to get a yellowy sort of color like this. Yeah. Not all of them have to be that same color. I, I love having uh, using white gouache because it's just the most versatile. You can you can mix any watercolor with it. Tube costs about you know here in Australia about ten bucks. Mix anything in with it, and um, basically create another color, another gouache color. So. You know, here in the buildings, I thought, why not put in some little highlights running through here? More white, a little bit more white running through. Yeah. Just a little too much. I don't want to overdo it. Why not? Why not do it? I'm going to add in a few bits here. Um, also, a little, this has got a kind of, you know, reaching up the top there. Well, maybe there. And it's been a few little bits here like that. And just finishing, little finishing touches. Layering is so important. You, you, you get, um, effects and layers in here that you let me just make sure i just get in this little this is the the side here of the the road and you'll notice there's actually a little little highlight kind of going on the side of that road and i'm just putting in a slight bit of gouache there there okay you do it on this side as well kind of like this there uh, you might notice it even on the road little Bits of gouache highlights here in the road. Uh, have a look. It's just all about balance, and sometimes I can go back, rebalance that thing that looks all right. Um, fantastic. So I I think we'll finish this one off. Um, I'm going to do another one now. If you guys are, uh, are still around, okay. Um. But I think it's a, it's certainly a good a first try of this scene that I've done. Certainly a first little good try. And um, I hope you uh, had fun with this session and, and in terms of like uh, the wet the wet and wet work that I tried and also this kind of night scene because I know we haven't tried something like this before. Okay, so fantastic. I'm, I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes, <clears throat> come back, set up, and we'll get uh, the second one done. So uh, bear with me. And I'll be back in a moment.
Okay, hello everyone. I am back and uh, thought I would show you a little bit of my process in terms of uh, before I start a scene, uh, how I do a little, uh, a quick kind of tonal sketch, a tonal study. This one I've only done in one color, a bit of purple, so it's next scene. But I was trying to work out uh, one, whether I wanted to raise that horizon line a little bit. Which I've decided is a good idea because if we look at that reference picture, you probably bring that reference picture up on another screen, you'll find that it is enormously complicated. The, the figures are so small at the back. So um, I wanted to raise that horizon line a little bit to make it more kind of eye level and perhaps uh, create more uh, figures that are closer, like here, here. So, so a lot of times you'll find that with reference photos, you just need to adjust and change it up so that it's doable you're not sitting here for the whole day so this is the little tonal sketch i've done on the right hand side i was done a little tonal sketch of this scene that we just did today so where is it let's grab that out here it is yeah like that so um a little bit of an idea not too detailed but i just wanted to see if that would work this top section so that's a bit of my my sort of process um i don't do this for all of the of the scenes but i had a bit of time last night to do some practice and just to um try a few things out so i thought this would be good for you to understand well the shadow patterns in this reference photo they're not too apparent and i wanted to make them a little bit more um obvious so uh, more from the left to right shadow pattern maybe one big shadow being cast down the bottom okay some cars here and there so i have this uh, tonal sketch i'll just pop it up on the side there somewhere so i've got a bit of a, a view of it um because compositional composition wise i actually like how that one is and hopefully we can um pull that pull that one off didn't take me too long to do that as well it probably took me about 10 minutes to sketch that one in okay so we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get to it i'm gonna grab some pens again i've got a 0 0.5 0 0.8 and a 0 0.3 i think this one will be a little bit more straightforward than the last one and uh yeah certainly it'd be a little bit more straightforward than the last one because it's a daytime sort of scene uh, Lindsay's joined and she says she's here for the second one. Thank you, Lindsay. And uh, I don't think there's any more, I think there's any more um, chats. Let me know if you're still around, if you're still watching. It looks like on Facebook we've still got um, a bunch of people watching, which is, which is great. Um, Gracie says, I love your tips and how you explain your techniques. This is one. Good to know, Tracy, that it's uh, helping you out. Um, yeah, I find like when I was starting out, it was tricky because people, you know, you'd watch a tutorial and they'd just be like, hey, just pick, they pick up this, use this brush, and I'm just going to paint this in. But you're thinking, how are they doing that? <laughs> how much water they're adding in, or the uh, how they're kind of getting that mark on the paper. So I always try to explain how. I am I'm achieving a particular mark or a particular effect. Okay, so let's have that reference photo up on the screen so that we can see what is happening. Now, again, I, I wanna just increase that horizon line to about here. I'm gonna draw a line like here. Okay. This horizon line. Okay. And um, the easiest thing to draw in this scene, uh, I would say, is probably that middle building. Now, the center of the building, uh, sorry, the center of the page marks the beginning of that large building. So let's put a mark here, roughly here. And we want to just put a mark where the building, sort of the side of it starts, about here, and a bit of that edge that goes up like that here, a bit of the Top part of the building that sort of curves around like that kind of around here that's the base 
and then we've got the edge here. So this using this little technique, I can already start to draw in this building, edge of it, this, come down, base there, okay. Um, bring this edge down as well, yeah. Base, here we go. And uh, bring this over like that. Yep. I'm wording on top of that building. I can't really make out what it says. There, this kind of top section of that building has like another curve like that. Comes down like this. And it kind of joins on here. Side. There. That. That comes down, and here we have it. We have that enormous building right in the center. Um, I have been to Tokyo before, but I don't really remember where uh, the, all the locations are. I, I, think, I think I went to Shibuya. Um, it was quite a while ago. I went with a, with a bunch of my um, good friends from, from my university back. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. So... Um, yeah, do let me know if you if you if any of you guys have been to Japan or you know exactly where this is. I I know this. It just says Tokyo, the reference photo, so it's somewhere in Tokyo, but I don't know exactly where. Um, and you know that's the big building in the center. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and do all this stuff on the right hand side now. Um, there's a little bit of this building that kind of like juts out like this. It hasn't finished off yet. It's kind of like that. Just the edge of the building. Bit of this blue sort of sign or whatever it is like that. Okay, I'm using all the same pen as well at the moment. I just to simplify this, simplify this down. You will notice at the base of the building as well, you have like a little uh, indication like that. Yeah, and then it kind of goes around the edge edges like this. Got like again bottom parts of these buildings here that just the. Uh, Reduce in size as we continue on. Let me have a look. Yeah, this is another large building. Let's bring this one down around about here. Um, again, these bottom parts of the shop shop fronts. Yeah, going to be pretty dark. Uh, well, I'm going to make them pretty dark anyway. And continue on here. There's actually some trees and all kinds of things. There's little cars here, off in the in the distance, and I'll uh, put some in here as well, like that. Um, this is where things get a little bit easy because uh, obviously in there it's quite difficult to see exactly what's going on. But if we simplify this down, these buildings kind of go up, like this, kind of like this. Where do they stop? Right about here. Um, the top of this building kind of coincides with that edge there, like that. And uh, it kind of just comes down. So I'm going to get this side of that building in. Yeah, like that. Um, it's like a gigantic billboard. And this uh, little square billboard down the bottom. Yeah. And uh, again, a bit of this side of the building that I'll just put in. Yeah. Bottom part of the building has a kind of rectangular thing. And, and look at this. We've got these little people just walking around underneath. So we can try just putting in a few here, some smaller ones. Now, I always, I always put the heads in first and then get the body in after that. Okay, just simple little figures like this. Okay, maybe these cars should be slightly bigger now. Always got to make sure everything's kind of in proportion to one another. You know, I might even get a, a car here, for example, a little bit closer to the scene. Um, I'll use the other ones as a bit of a, a reference for this one. Okay, and there we go. We've got a car that's a little bit closer. Um, you know, this is like a crossing, a pedestrian crossing or something like that. And then we are going to get in some of these other uh, buildings here in the back. So that kind of comes up like this, edge of that building like that. And then the rest of them, I just, we can make up. Yeah, it's not exact thing here. There's another kind of 
and I got a cylindrical look like that comes down but then another building kind of cuts in front of it like this like that um, and then things just get smaller and uh, recede off into the distance I think that's a good like a good thing to imply smaller buildings off into the distance and the buildings have also got these like um some pieces on of parts of the billboard still on the building like that uh what is this it looks like it's a gigantic screen or something it's interesting side of this one there's a kind of a squarish thingamo there okay uh oh there's one here got already but it's kind of like an edge like this kind of edge like this there we go so we are uh, almost done with the stuff on that right hand side uh you know this is something i like to do as well little little kind of marks running through the building to indicate the directionality uh the perspective or also that we have like the buildings going off into the background like that it certainly helps a lot to imply what is happening um, and the floors also implies like the floors of the building which is super important okay the ones at the back just become almost flat okay dokie so um now we again more people we can put in more people and all kinds of like stuff going on in here it's just um people and i'm just you know trying to simplify this down look at that and i'm not even really lifting my my pen from the the page these ones i really just want to make sure that they are quick sporadic kind of uh, figure figures maybe walking around in the distance um, if you want you can also put a figure that's closer to the front um, that will um, bring the the scene forwards more so for example um, i don't know maybe too late to do it let's try we have a figure here yeah there's a head that and then maybe they're just kind of coming forwards like this there we go and then and it's a little bit more a little bit more drawn out yeah see a bit more detail for this figure that a couple of arms or something there as well um but the head's kind of got to line up as well this one's probably a little bit too low i'll put another one in perhaps here that and put a leg coming in like that and leg going to a, the back of there that looks a bit better Okay. we've got a few uh, bits and pieces going on in here um so do this edge like that yet uh, some of these other pens that i have as well these flat pens um, they're great for getting in little details um let's put in some of this this could be like a part of the front part of the shop there's these little support pillars or something here for that side of the building there um you know more of them here perhaps as well um what have we got another bit of detail up here you know just picking out some small parts here and there okay and of course the figures let's put in some figures here um and there's a car which is a good Kind of little thing here, a little bit of a car. Another one, there's a couple of wheels, and there we have it. That's a car. Put in some windows, no, or two. And uh, we have another car, kind of like turning here or something like that. Put in some of this detail for that car. There's the wheel. I'm gonna try put in the wheels first, and then. Uh, Top of it like that. So it looks like a van now or something. So there's a couple of cars, um, and we're going to surround them with some figures like this. There, okay. This is kind of crucial. Put these little figures here because I'm going to go and color in a bit of that background um, with some uh, with with a darker color in a moment, and that will um, that will obliterate some of that detail in there. So again, this is just these little, you can see, 
sides of the building. Okay. And, and perspective wise, what happens as you move down closer to the to the to the um, ground, the lines become straighter, but as you go up to the top, the lines um, go higher up. I think this is, I don't know what they call this. I think it's a uh, two point perspective. Um, yeah, you have to look up some some tutorials on it. But when it's kind of when you have got you've got different vanishing points, you've got a vanishing point here and you've got a vanishing point here. Uh, well, maybe three vanishing points actually is one, two, three. But um, yeah, so uh, we'll go in and uh, put in a bit more details. Let me know how you're going um, if you are if you're still here. Ellen says she's still here. Um, and let me know if you need any help as so, well. I'm actually actually enjoying this. This is cool. Um, looks like for like YouTube and Facebook are actually uh, what do they call it? Transcribing, transcribing what I'm saying live. I've never seen it do that before. Uh, here we go. A bit more bits and pieces, and you know, start putting some of this as part of the building, connecting it up. Here we go. A bit more here, there. Here we go. This central building is super important because it allows us to, uh, I, I don't know, I, f I find that it's just a, a large focal point. It's right in the center here, yeah? So it's, it's hard to miss it. Certainly hard to miss it. So certainly spend a bit more time drawing it. Um, I think all this busy busyness and stuff up the top here I will have to uh, get in a little bit later. I, I'll probably try, I'll try a bit of flat, um, that use that flat pen and, and get in a little detail in there, but I, I reckon we'll leave a lot of that in for later. Uh, with the watercolors, it will just be more fun to do it drawing later. I'm just delaying this left bit. Let's go into it, yeah, let's just do it. So this left side um, little thingamabo signboard comes in like this, comes down the page. Sort of like this, there. Okay, it's like a signboard. Another one that sort of comes down here, and there's a tree that just runs through, like this. This tree. Um, I think some this is just some kind of organic thing running through here is going to help uh, create more interest. Um, I don't know how, how well I've done that tree, but we'll see. Again, if you if if you end up doing the pen work and it doesn't quite look like uh, what you want it to look like, you should still continue on because, um, as you can see, like it's not the end. You, once you get the watercolors in, there's still an opportunity to drop in more bits and pieces and things in that scene. This can be kind of like a graphic line, something like that. Some more figures here uh, in the distance, very small figures waiting at the traffic light to cross or something like that. Um, and clump them together and overlap them, get them facing different directions, you know, as the people are walking different directions, that kind of thing. Uh, now I'm gonna get in this building here. I'm gonna start down like this there, and then there's just like, more trees and shrubs and there's even a even a kind of a pole here comes across like a kind of pole there and these buildings in the background sort of uh move back further um excellent uh delona delona uh says this has been great i'm learning a ton just by watching will i be able to watch it again later yes <clears throat> These ones are these ones are, are recorded, and you'll be able to watch them after the after the stream. So uh, it's good. I'm happy to have you here. You know? and um, it will make more sense when you're actually following along and 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 uh, drawing and painting at the same time. So uh, yeah, carrying on. These are just trees here. These are just kind of trees. Yeah. And you've got this big 
set of buildings here in the middle. Um, it was cool. I like I like that there are a few trees and some organic shapes in here. It was getting a bit too much. I I should have snuck one in here actually. Uh, righto. So we need to leave a bit of space, or do we? Tricky, isn't it? Let's do this. Let's do this middle bit first. Um, there's a kind of this little middle section where there's two billboards, and then these these two ones that are really kind of high up. Um, the higher up one starts roughly here, okay. roughly here, now compared to that building. So notice it sort of that 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 blue billboard that says Wis Wisamitsu. It's kind of like right next to this section there. So then I'm drawing it there. A lot of police sirens side for some reason. Uh, going on. Here we go. A couple of these these billboards, and then of course we have this front of this building here, kind of like a metallic thing, metallic sort of uh, thing. And we will continue on, and uh, of course. Just drawing shapes, they're just squares. Just think of it as squares and all kinds of rectangles. I mean, here that's like that's a rectangle. And then you're gonna then there's a square here, like that. And then underneath there's a rectangle. I can draw that. Breaking it down into small components makes it easier for you to deal with mentally. Otherwise, you look at it as a big cityscape, and it's uh, you're gone, gone. So makes focus on one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Um. So Edna says one thing I noticed: no matter how small or big the figures are, the heads seem to be on the same height. Should it always be like that? And what is the reason for that? So very uh, good question, Edna. So basically, when you have a completely flat scene, so we're talking about a scene where, um, you know, the ground is flat, when you kind of look out, um, basically at eye level, you're going to be seeing if all the heads are on the same level, it's basically indicating that you're um, the, around about the same height as these figures, okay, which means that the ground is flat. If you say, if I started putting some figures here and they the head started increasing in heights as you move back, that would indicate an incline. So the land going upwards and going up a hill. Similarly, if you have figures in the foreground with their heads higher up and then you make the figures in the background with their heads lower, um, it's going to imply a decline, um, a downward sort of slope. Of course, you're going to have, say if I draw like a little child here or something, it could just be shorter person the head's going to be smaller than the others okay it's okay to have a few like that here and there um but if you have a few just going down smaller and smaller the perspective is going to just look funny so i hope that answers your your question edna um okay so we are almost done with this we just got to put in a few more it's just um it's up to it's up to your personal preferences really in terms of how much detail and things you want to add on um i just like to go into i feel till the feeling's right i don't know when to really say whether something is done or not um you just you just get the impression that you've had enough and and um you're happy with what's there so I want to connect this on a little bit. This is a little bit messy. I certainly think that I've gone a bit messy back here. It's okay. What I'll do is um, also uh, use a bit of that black marker in here um, to get in some darkness. I'll show you what I mean later. It's really cool, really cool little effect. Um, okay. Jeez, what do we got here, guys? One. Let's put it, let's simplify this down. One. One block here. And then we're going to have another block in here. Yeah. And these kind of just go behind. Sometimes the only way to do it is just to 
just to go in and do it. Too much thinking, um, but it's important as well. I'm doing little measurements, but they do come a bit more naturally to me these days. So look at this building here that says UC. You see that UC sign ends at the start of this second sign here. So certainly I'm doing little measurements. Sometimes I don't even realize that I'm doing it, but um, even when I'm going out these days, like I'll look at buildings or I'll look at like uh, people and stuff and I'll just kind of look at the, sh like try to see the shapes and observe and the shadows. That's something as well to, to try to do. Well, if you're not painting, wherever you are, you are outside, uh, yeah, just, just force yourself to look at things in terms of like shadows and colors and tones and how you would like if you're going to paint it i think that's worked very well for me like perspective as well just observing where you know you're walking somewhere and you're walking up a hill just observe where people's heads are you know think things like that because actually we don't do that um consciously you know if it we only notice something is a bit off when it just uh, when we're drawing and it and uh, the perspective is not adding up, otherwise, um, you know, in, in life, we everything's pretty much in order. So that's why we kind of got to imitate that a little bit and use those same principles um, when we're painting and we're drawing. And um, same thing goes with like computer game designers where they're designing three D scenes um, with perspective and with uh, light engines and stuff like that. I mean, it all has to kind of match the, the physics of um, our world. So we're kind of, to, to, for it to make sense in our minds, um, we have to take a bit of what's out there and put it in our, in our art. Otherwise, it's just going to be completely abstract. And that's nothing you know, fine as well. But we're trying to do a scene of something like this. I don't want it to look like it. done guys it's almost done look at that um and you know we do have a few bits and pieces here i think um you know i really want to get some kind of shadow running across here something like that maybe shadows of the cars perhaps uh, another figure here closer to the scene here we go here's a figure there maybe we could, maybe i might have another car here hey just copy this one The van or something. A bit of a shoddy, shoddy sort of car. But it's a car. And maybe one here that's just like facing this direction. Hey. That just this uh, chaotic sort of scene. <laughs> okay. Mm. Excellent. We are just about done with the drawing, everyone. Um, this reminds me a little bit of that graphic design one that I did the other day, the graphic design sort of scene. Um, Whitney, you, you, I, I think you commented on that the other day um, where it was like a New York scene that I did and it had a, a lot of graphic marker stuff uh, that I used. So um, let's, let's get in some of the shadows. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, what else do we want to want in here as well? I mean, I think I've noticed this foreground is awfully, awfully um, empty. But we put in some more figures, hey? Let's do that. Up this scene a bit more. Yeah, a couple of walking. Notice the the body is slanted to that right. Okay, that indicates that they're walking this way. Okay. That. That. Um, that's how you kind of make sense of it all. This person may just be standing up in the middle of the road doing God knows what. This person here. Uh, uh, maybe they could have put a child here, hey? Put a child here. Child in the middle of the road. 
parent or whatever. Okay. It's kind of a, telling a bit of a story. Okay. Is that enough? Is that enough? Would have liked to have another car here, actually. Too late. Let's try. Yeah. There we go. Ah. Uh, kind of uh, next to each other in a race. Um, fantastic. And again, this is where I was kind of talking about before we kind of go into these background scenes. Um, and I can put in a bit of uh, darkness into the background. And uh, where is the pen? Where are my pens? Graphic is. Just have a thicker sort of nib like that. And I'm going to go in and just color a bit. And I'll show you just the effect that it has. Also, you can do this with the watercolors. And in, in all likelihood, I will go back into this with the watercolors afterwards. Okay, because uh, it tends to get, these tend to look pretty light against things like neutral tint. Okay, but look at that, just tiny bits of contrast here. Scene. Basic, right? But uh, it, it looks interesting. It makes it look more. but just creates a bit of contrast in here something like that you can do this all over the place overdo it but you can do it in quite a few different places like here as well perhaps back into these buildings there they help also to draw out the figures see look that figure now is coming out a bit these cars a bit of that darkness in the background is drawing out the cars a bit here this uh, car is coming out too there 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 it's kind of carries along through the whole scene but little little um little tricks little tricks that will help you okay even you can put the shadow for the car and the only i used i get in get these in with the watercolors but um that's something you can do as well shadow probably comes bit more forwards, uh, forwards to the right, like that. Here's a bit of a shadow here. That, here, shadow, 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 here, that, there. And underneath the cars, you can have a shadow as well here, there. And these figures, of course, little shadows underneath them. Like that, with well, this big one coming through at the front. Well, all right, let's um, go ahead and start painting. I'm going to spend a bit of time already drawing that. We should be done very soon. Um, have, grab your palette out. Um, I've got mine here. Let me just bring up my camera. And we'll... Okay, you guys can see. You guys can see all, all good. Um, excellent. Um, a, few other, a few other comments. We've got Cynthia following from Washington State. Are you going, Cynthia? Thank you for thank you for joining. And Edna says, uh, "Thank you. You explained it well. Fantastic." So let's. Let's uh, let's get cracking with the uh, drawing. Uh, sorry, the painting. And first thing I want to do is is uh, we want to add in some more of the warmer colors again. So I'm going to go with some orange, a little bit of orange and a bit of this yellow. Just putting it onto that building to that right hand side. And just something like that. There. Because we know this actually, this area is um, one of the warmest areas. It's in in the scene, and we've got a bit of warmth here as well. Um, okay, so we can just add in a bit of that there. Um, and to be honest, some of it just comes over onto that side of the building as well. Well, uh, like that there. Let's have a look some more here on these edges of the buildings. There on the top of that one there, um, you know, a bit of dry brush to get in some little warm areas like that. 
a lot of it I will actually get in with the cooler color too. So um, in that, I'll drop in a bit of coolness in there. Yeah, but the main thing is just uh, getting in some of these, again, these really lighter sort of colors and um, bits of life running through this this uh, scene. You know, here's a bit of blue. I'll put a bit of ultramarine in here, a bit darker. Um, you know, in these sections here, they may just have coolness in there as well like that and break that down slightly a bit of a bit of um, blue okay in there but i'd say it's mainly cooler in these areas um and then it sort of the coolness here sort of joins up with the warmth on that right hand side um and i'll put a, a intermediary sort of mix in there and why not add in a bit of a bit of this purpley sort of color in this building as well like that it will mix and do its thing which is what i want just uh, something like this okay. Okay. that here and ultramarine plus a bit of burnt umber is just a great shadow color Nearer to imply darkness. Um, there we go. Just dark. That. And um, let's get in this stuff on that left hand side as well. A bit more warmth as well here. Slightly more warmth. I'm trying not to use too many vibrant colors uh, just yet. We do have quite a few in terms of like the warm colors. Okay. But the rest of it, it's um, I've tried to dull them down slightly, and the, the reason reason for that is because I, I want to add in maybe some high contrast colors later, more vibrant hues. Here's a bit of ultra, uh, not ultra, but uh, cerulean there, a bit there. Um, you know, for the trees, I'm going to use some um, undersea green, pretty dark. Yeah, just tree shape there. Another tree shape here and here. Okay, this is all going to blend together and do its thing. The base of this building, let's put in a bit of coolness. That coolness, more coolness. Let's always make sure we have enough coolness at the base. This, okay. Of course, we can't forget the ground, which we're going to have to now decide what color. Uh, I'm going to just use a generic kind of warm color like this. Perhaps a bit of gray mixed into it. A bit of neutral tint. I'll let that a bit a little. Okay. Carry this the wash from that back region forwards. Um, enough. Let's try some of this yellow ochre in here. Okay. Cut around the figures and the cars and all that. You don't have to, but I, I do like to do it so that I can uh, get in like individual colors for the figures later. Okay. So we're just coloring this all in one color, yeah? Same. It's kind of like a dulled down yellow color. You can already see things starting to slowly come together. Right there. Now let's um, put in a tiny bit of color here in the in the um, in this section, and what I'm going to do is use this as kind of like a shadow color, okay? And I want to mix up, and make sure that it's pretty, um, you know, thick enough at the bottom. I'm using a mixture of about fifty percent paint, fifty percent water, thick a sort of mix of um, of uh, purple and neutral tint, and I'm adding in a shadow here across the bottom part of the scene, yeah. Trying this out, something like that. Could be a building just kind of across. Sometimes you get buildings that kind of intersect here as well. So a bit of a building shadow like that. Softer, but still pretty dark enough to imply the edge. Okay, let's leave that and um, top part of the scene. I'm going to grab a uh, cerulean blue, a good amount of cerulean blue. I'm going to drop that in to the top 
and spread this all around in a few little brush strokes. Cerulean blue really, um, for me, it just dries off so quickly. I don't know why this uh, tube that I bought, it, it, it just dries really quickly and granulates. It granulates nicely. Kind of working quite quick because I know the uh, properties of this paint. So I, uh, I want it to kind of dry all funny. Go through just a, a flat wash of this. Okay, but what I'm going to do is also add in a bit of darkness on top of the, the scenes. So, but firstly, let's get in a very light wash. This is only 10 to 15% paint. It has to be pretty light because it's the sky. The sky is normally the lightest section of the painting. They seen anyway. There we go. Bit there. How about we put in some purple up the top? Little little kind of cloud or something here. Okay. That bit here. That and the darkness off on the top of the sky is going to help to create the effect, the illusion of some clouds that are kind of closer to the scene, which is quite important. Not to leak over to the Might use this as well to get in a bit of a, a cloud shape next to the the orangey yellow sort of section of that building. See, just playing with complementaries. That softness, the paint is still wet. Drop in what you'd like to up the top there. I don't want to overdo it though. I think that will be fine. While that's all drying, let's go put in some colors for the figures. I'll put in, let's try some red or something for this one. A bit of red. There, and then I might go a bit of uh, turquoise here for this one, okay? Um, maybe some purple, and, and also don't feel like you need to color them all in. You can leave some of them white, like that figure there, that, that child could just be wearing like a white shirt or something, okay? There, um, don't get too bogged down in the colors and what have you, just more so look at the um, tones. I think that's more crucial. Okay. But uh, because we've got all this warmth in the ground, I think having a cool a bit of coolness in, in here helps. The windscreens of the cars as well, a bit of coolness in the cars, a bit in that building. Um, there, like this, this one is actually kind of maybe a bit warmer. I want to make it a bit warmer anyway. And we've got some other figures here. In the um, background there, just a little, just a touch of color for their shirts and stuff like that. It's not really any detail. Okay, good. So um, I'm going to dry this off and then we're going to finish it with the last um, wash. Okay, we are almost done. Um, so kind of like the, the last scene, what we want to do is um, add in a, a strong kind of um, contrast here with all the darks. And um, my goal here is really just to get in um, a, a, a quick shadow, okay? So I'm going to be using a bit of purple, a bit of neutral tint, a bit of purple and neutral tint, um, and a bit of brown to just um, dull it down a bit as well. I don't want it to be too vibrant of a shadow mix. A bit of granulating brown. Let's mix this all together. There we go. Um, now I've got a large brush here as well. I've also got a smaller brush, like this is just a number six round brush. 
Okay, the bit part that sticks out to me the most is this building here. Yeah, there's a. It's certainly it's it's fairly dark, um, and there's also these little windows and things on it as well. So we can just see this little brush. I've got this little round brush. We can just um, imply some of these windows or whatever. Yeah, not perfect, and I and I intentionally just splotched a large bit of paint in there so that it doesn't. Um, look too structured, yeah. Yeah, this base, yeah. There, there, bit here. Right. There, and then we've got uh, a bit more here at the top. There. And we've got uh, little sections up the top edge of it, little bits of darkness running through the top section of that building. I don't know if this is dark enough. Actually. I don't know, just you want to make it quite dark in some of these areas. Okay. Um, and I'm going to exaggerate the uh, darkness running on that right hand side here. Bring this down like this. Okay. That. And um, a bit of darkness on these buildings, passed by the shadow of the buildings um, to the left. A little there, a little there. Right. But apart from that, I'll leave the rest of it. Okay. That. Good, good. More of this base color and darkness here. At the base. This is just neutral tint. Kind of like I was saying before, that you now realize the dark, um, the darks of the paint are actually darker than the pen. I can get extra contrast by putting in some um, little pieces like that in here. And there might be some little bits of darkness as well. Little shadows, perhaps, between the edge of that building or like that. Connecting out. Finding connections is so important. Just this, the, the large kind of value that runs through the whole scene, this um, cool, darker sort of value that runs through, makes it interesting. Might have a little bit here as well. That. These ones are pretty much in the dark. Okay, so. I can probably afford to darken these a little bit. Building. Okay. Um, and if you want to add some colors, some more vibrant colors sections, that's a, it's a real good time to go ahead and do that. Soften. Something funny about that. Soften a bit more. Okay. Blend in with the yellow. So, consistency is there in that yellow too, just to join it a bit more. Okay. Even here, you know, probably, you know, there's actually little bits of light and dark in here too. But, but that's a huge focal point, that section there, because you've got huge contrast and then, and, and, and then you've also got um the, the strong complementaries coming through okay right the trees are a very dark color um tempted to just use neutral tint in them even kind of a neutral tint neutral tint and green very very dark green that some in here as well yeah that blend on and bring go downwards on the page um there. Good. Um, figures. Let me just try to put on extra color for the figures. Legs. Especially just uh, outlining the legs a bit more. This. And also, you know, you notice with the legs and the, and the shadow pattern, if the light's coming from the left, you notice the shadow pattern running to the right-hand side of that figure. This. 
and the left hand side of that figure will be kind of illuminated. This is a an oversimplification, but it works at a basic level. This here, uh, these cars, they, they've got to be darkened a bit more underneath. More contrast, maybe as well underneath. In screens, there, there. Oops. Extra darkness here. This figure that's kind of close by. That, yeah. A bit more shadows and stuff in the background as well. Um, I haven't done some of these other figures in the back. Let's. I can just put in a little color like that. There. There. Get the idea. Bit of the legs. This. Legs and things. Trying to draw out some extra contrast and things too. Being a bit bolder and seeing if I can create a bit more action in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. That um so um let's try putting in like a little bit of line work. Just a little kind of perspective of running across the ground that good kind of emanating from this middle point here. Uh, a few questions. So Edna is asking, what difference uh, does it make if I use a heat gun instead of a hairdryer? I think a heat gun probably is, uh, you can change, you can change the temperature. Um, and it's probably, it's used to heat, heat up to a high temperature. Um, you can probably get away with it, um, but put it on a lower temperature, I'd, I'd say. Edna, um, and Marion says, how come sometimes when I paint, I get air bubbles? How do you get rid of them? Hmm, air bubbles. Do you mean air bubbles on the actual paper where you're like, um, uh, you're painting and then the, the painting forms and bubbles? I don't know what you, uh, don't know if I've experienced that 100% before, um, but yeah, do do let me know. I do sometimes get uh, a little bit if I'm just mixing or mixing things around and it, it could be the constant, it could be the paint itself, whatever they've added to the paint. Um, but I haven't had that really happen to me. Um, Marion says, I noticed you got some in your sky. Oh, I think I know what you're saying. Yeah, these little these little bits here. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure, but um, it happens with some paints. Like I do find with the granulating paints, you, you get them more. The non-granulating paints, um, you tend to have like smoother washes that just don't do that. Um, but with that said, I really love granulating paints. So... Um, but yeah, I have noticed that like here, here, a few, a few like that as well. Um, Edna's saying, can you give us a tip on how to choose the best focal point in a painting, in painting a series of buildings like you have just done? Um, normally the reference picture, a reference picture will give you an indication of that because for photographers, they, they compose their, their pictures as well. And they try to, frame things a certain way. So like I thought this this building and that building were like really good good um focal points. Even if I just cut the painting and just did that section, that probably would look pretty pretty decent as well. Um I often tr you know sometimes you're not able to to get a good focal point in a reference. You'll find the reference might have um yeah just uh everything's just dark and gloomy looking and you might have to accentuate accentuate some light. I've done that here. So this this is kind of like a focal point. This these areas, the figures where we've got like a bit of darkness and light here in the ground as well. Um and I think by creating this shadow here, that's created some focus, um, a general focal point in the in the foreground was you know, eyes being drawn to this area between the, the shadow and then the lighter section there. So um that's something that I really like doing. 
playing with the shadows. Not what I'm doing here, actually. I should have just. Um, I think if I can just. I'm gonna change these lines so that they kind of like go more, more over like that. Made a little. I made a little mistake here, guys. Um. Two. It's okay. Um, we'll just tighten this out a little bit. A few little directional lines like that running through. This could be like a shadow of a tree or something, something that's a little bit more inconsistent like that. There. Just wanted some lines on the ground, but what I was wanting to do was to get all these lines actually um, coming out more on this side. For some reason, I changed that line to make it more. Yeah, so that's okay. Still looks fine. And and part of painting is like making the most of your mistakes, um, continuing on and just working with the mistakes unfortunately with watercolors there's very little you can do um there's very little you can do sometimes when you make an error but just work with it which is a, which i think is actually kind of fortunate you know it for, for me it kind of psychologically has taught me to just um deal with things that don't really work out um, and to not be afraid of things not working out as well. And, you know, besides, it, it's just paint and paper. Always remember that. Okay, I, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with this one. I'm, I'm so tempted to put some birds or something in the sky, but I always tend to do that. And I don't think I'll do it for this one. <laughs> um, another thing you can do is if you've got some gouache again, a little bit of white gouache, um, you can use that to create some small contrasts on uh, figures and areas. So I'll, I'll uh, just go ahead and do that. Um, and then we'll finish off this uh, live. So here's a bit of white on the left-hand side of these figures like this. A bit on the car. Here, a bit on the head and the shoulder like that. A um, bit on the car here. This figure will make kind of a difference. However, it's um still hasn't dried yet, so I can't do a huge amount there. Okay, bit there, there, there. Um, bits in here maybe. Okay, now you're just finding maybe a few a few areas that you might want to create contrast and that kind of thing in there. That, don't overdo it, but just um, also don't be afraid to just have a play and see what happens. Little speckles of um, interest, contrast. Okay. So I am done with that one. Um, I'll leave. Uh, I leave a couple of minutes for some questions, everybody. I've been streaming for quite some time. Um, let me know. Let me know how you're going, Ron. I hope you hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you enjoyed this session. Um, for those of you who haven't been here before or are interested in some more of my my classes, some more of my videos, um, I do have a Patreon, and um, also like courses on my my website. So I'll put that into the chat and um, you can you can take a look at them and uh, if you're interested and would like to support me and you get a lot of um, a lot of courses and value out of what I've got in there and if you don't like it um, just let me know and I'll refund you the money you can always try it for for a month but I'm pretty sure you'll like it um, I always get a lot of good feedback from my students on there um, I'm not sure if there's anything else I, I wanted to go through, everyone. Um, I'd just like to thank you so much for, for coming along, um, spending 
uh, close to four hours with me. Um, I'm changing the future one so that I'm just going to be doing one per session. I think that will allow me to focus a bit more on the that particular reference, get through questions and kind of uh, make it easier on myself as well because I have been finding that um, streaming for this long is um, can be quite tiring. Initially, I was okay with it, but um, I think if I stream, perhaps if I stream more often, but less for less hours, I think that would be better um, for everyone's sake. So I thought, yeah, we'll give it a try. And um, so this will be uh, for, for a while, the last one I'll do that has two endings in there. But uh, that's what I said last time as well. And to um, get overly ambitious at times. Um, but I really appreciate you all being here. We've, we've, um, and, and we've done quite a lot today. Done quite a lot today. If you've made it through and you finished off a painting, you really, you really should congratulate yourself because it, getting through it is, um, is, is basically the, the most tricky thing and the most um, difficult thing I think in watercolors or painting in general, because um, you often are battling yourself psychologically. You're going through it and you're like, oh, should I continue it? Does it look good? Does it, you know, um, is it going to work out? But just finish it and. And you learn something from it. I certainly look at these two two paintings. I think they look um, look pretty decent. But there's a lot of things that I I want uh, that I would improve in there for next time. A lot of things that I would do differently. Okay, so um, everything is a learning experience, and you know, being a lifetime learner is the the, the key to to sort of improving, being. Um, you, you, yeah, being sort of uh, more conscious of what you're doing, the process, reflecting. I always I have a blog and then I'll, I'll write kind of reflections on how I think it went, uh, what struggles I had along the way. And then that helps you to to sort of um, to, to, to learn better. It's an active form of learning. And I think learning uh, is more than just sitting there and just watching someone do it. I think it's doing it yourself firstly and um and then introspecting at the end looking back at your process and thinking I, I like that i like that um i could try that differently or you know perhaps i could try different colors or perhaps you know like tr i think objectively looking at your own work and, and thinking um what else could i try what else could i what else do i want to emphasize you know where am i heading with my work i think that's uh really crucial really crucial thing to to do so um i'm gonna have a quick look at the the, the chats um look at the chats oh there's a few a few new chats here um on youtube uh jennifer ra thank you uh so much for your offering thank you thank you jennifer for joining um i think you might be are you new on youtube some some people have been finding my channel from it being referred so welcome um you are. Yvette says, thanks, Darren. Gorgeous. Uh, thank you, Yvette, for coming along. And Ellen, of course, uh, thank you, Ellen, for your suggestions on um, on these two scenes. Uh, like uh, some of my patrons have been um, on Patreon have been suggesting a few scenes to do. And I really, really want to make sure I honor, the, honor them and um, and uh, do my best to, to uh, paint something that they'd like to see as well. And it's good for me too because I it, it pushes me out of my comfort zone. I do something that I haven't done before because normally I just paint. I have certain preferences, if you notice, with the things that I paint. Um, so it's good. It's 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 a great thing. So if any of you guys out there have a have any suggestions, please uh, let me know what you want to see next time. Put them in the comments. I'll have a read of them later. Um, if you're a patron uh, on Patreon, I'll I'll, I'll uh, make sure that I. Um, get through uh, some of your, your requests. Uh, I've noted down pretty much all my patrons requests already. I've got about six more, I think, ending. So um, Lindsay says, uh, yeah, but Yvette says, it would be nice to do shorter ones sometimes. <laughs> maybe I can do some real simple ones as well, Yvette, like maybe a one figure or just something quick. Um, I feel like streaming during the week. I think that might be good. Lindsay says, thanks. I admire your ability to stream for so long. Only one per session makes sense and looking forward to the next one. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I think it probably may be easier for you guys as well, uh, but I'm, I'm so um, 
I'm I'm so appreciative of you um, guys who have hung around for the end of this session or even halfway through. It's uh, it's a lot of time. It's a it's a lot of time, and I always want to make sure that it's worth your while and um, that I'm giving out as much as I can. Um, and, and, you know, being live makes it possible for me to do that and, um, being able to get back to all your questions. Great thing. Jennifer says, yes, new to the channel, originally via Facebook newsfeed. Awesome. Thanks, Jennifer. And, um, I hope to see you along in the next sessions. There's a lot of previous videos that I've done as well, um, that I've posted on YouTube and also on Facebook. So you can go through, have a look. There's lots of stuff, lots of things on there. Um, I think I've done about 30 something lives now. I'm trying to get to 100. Uh, that's my kind of goal. Kate says, great session. Thank you. And Marion, great session. And um, let me have a look. Oh, Dorinda. Oh, I remember you from last session. Dorinda Thika. Thika. Oh, no. I appreciate the time change, but I still missed out for once. I was off Facebook for a while. Thank you so much. I hope to be. Uh, on time for the next one yeah we'd love to see you there for the next one live it's uh it's it's a good it really motivates me um guys when you're here and um and getting the questions and, and stuff like that i'm not the i'm not the best at multitasking but i'm certainly a lot better than i was before being able to talk paint answer questions and, and stuff like that but you're just being here makes a huge difference um for me just the support that I um, get the encouragement and the uh, motivation to continue on, keep doing what I'm doing um, and, and, and improving. And as I improve and learn new things, uh, I'll do my best to share all those learnings with, with you guys as well. Um, I find it real difficult at the start to know where to head with my painting and just uh, people uh, charging all kinds of things for courses and um, you know, maybe not explaining exactly the process. So uh, I hope that, I hope this has helped some of you, you guys out um, and uh, really appreciate you being here. So I uh, thank you uh, again, and um, I will catch you guys again next week. If you have more questions on the scenes, please let me know um, in the comments. I'll try to get back to you later. And um, just a reminder as well, if you like the video, um, do me a favor and just share it around. It helps me get to more people and saves me time from having to like post it in groups and things like that, which is uh, uh, kind of mind numbing at times, honestly. I, I prefer painting, spending most of that time painting. So um, appreciate you being here. I will see you next time.